The lines between motorbikes and e-bikes are definitely getting blurry. So when you first set your sights on the new Lynx Cafe Cruiser style e-bike from Quiet Cat, you can be excused for wondering what's powering this thing. Well, if you want to know just how powerful this motor is and how quickly we can hit 28 miles per hour, you're going to need to stay tuned until the speed tests come up later. But believe me, it's fast. And this is definitely one awesome looking bike. With this moto inspired build, it stands out from the crowd. But what's the catch? Well, the team here at bikeride.com is going to get into it and find out just what makes the new Lynx e-bike purr as it rips up the pavement and double track during testing. Before we roll the intro, if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe to the channel and give us a like as it makes all of this possible. And we couldn't do this without you guys, our viewers. So I appreciate you being here and watching the content. Now let's get going and see what this bike is all about. So what is the Quiet Cat Lynx e-bike? Well, it's inspired by moto-style cafe cruisers. The Lynx is a full suspension e-bike with a very distinctive motorbike style. Looking at it head on, you can definitely see the similarities. Large tires combined with this inverted three tree suspension fork and the large headlight stand out. Move to the side and you can see its overbuilt frame and rear coil suspension. It really looks like an enduro dirt bike with a long synthetic leather saddle. During use, the bike is powerful, offering a thousand watt auto hub drive rear motor. The Lynx has a single speed drivetrain, but the direct drive mode automatically switches between two gearing options for pedal assist. This allows the single speed bike to be more comfortable throughout the speed range. It does a good job and the bike lends itself to e-powered riding, especially with its heavy weight and that grip style throttle that feels like a dirt bike. It's easy to give up on the pedaling and let the powerful motor power you around. This adds to that feeling of an e-motor bike. And when you let off the power, you notice the heavy overall weight of this unit. The bike weighs hundred pounds in total. The Lynx is also pretty high tech though, offering some next level specs. Connect to the bike with the Quiet Cat app via Bluetooth or cellular, and you can control the bike, adjust your settings, and track your rides. The bike has a GPS tracker, letting you know its location at all times and keeping you safe when you're out exploring. The app also lets you remotely lock, unlock, and keep your bike safe from thieves. So this is one fast and fun bike, but let's see how it does in testing, starting out with our pros and cons. And our first pro is that high speed throttle. The thousand watt motor and attached twist grip throttle are a lot of fun to operate. The Lynx is designed like a motorbike, inspiring the user to let the bike loose. Another great feature of the Lynx is that the user can change the bike's class and speed limit from the settings. It's super simple and you can set the bike as a class one, class two, class three, or even an unlimited mode. The bike powers you along at a max of 28 to 29 miles per hour in the unlimited mode, despite having a top speed of 60 miles per hour. Traveling at 28 miles per hour on throttle is a great feature for such a heavy bike, and it's fun to ride at this top speed. The throttle performs well from a dead stop as well, using that 83 newton meters of torque available to move the heavy bike. I was happy to note that the bike still had a good range, even leaning heavily on the throttle. Able to travel more than 22 miles at max speed using the throttle and very limited pedal assist. Our second pro is that dirt bike style suspension and ride. The Lynx looks and feels like a motorbike during operation, like we said before. And this is especially useful when traveling off road or at high speed. Features like the large tires, sturdy frame, and that stiff inverted suspension fork keep the bike flex free and confident. I enjoyed the suspension offered by the front and rear shock as well, and combined the bike could easily soak up a ton of different impacts. The bike easily traveled through ditches, over routes, and up or down different inclines and drop-offs. It truly feels like a little dirt bike, both on and off-road. This is both confidence inspiring and a ton of fun, so long as you don't find yourself stuck without power in a tight spot. 
Our third pro is comfort and capacity. The Lynx is pleasant to use whether you're on or off road because of its capacity and ride quality. The bike is very stable, which makes long rides more comfortable, especially when you're carrying gear. The rear rack and additional accessories that are offered with the bike allow you to adapt it for a ton of different situations. Even without a rear pannier bag, I found that the rear rack could easily accept a bag with just a few bungee cords. The bike would definitely make a worthy substitute for a motorbike for short trips under about 20 to 22 miles, offering high speed throttle only power and good carrying capacity on its rear rack or take that speed back a notch and you can increase that range even further. And now, as always, we gotta take a look at what didn't work so well with the cons. Starting out with con number one. This is a large and heavy bike. The moment you stand beside the Lynx, you notice its size. Its weight is really no joke either. At 100 pounds, it's a serious job to lift this bike onto a rack for most people. Just rolling it around can be a challenge with large tires and a dual crown front fork that has a really limited turn radius. It can be a huge pain. I felt like I was maneuvering a smaller dirt bike while moving this bike around unpowered. So smaller riders will wanna be careful of this unit's size and weight. And honestly, all users will just wanna be sure that they have sufficient room to store this bike because bringing it indoors, upstairs, or into cramped spaces like bike lockups or elevators is gonna be nearly impossible. It can also be challenging to get onto certain bike racks if you don't have one that has a lean capacity because a straight lift of this bike for one person is definitely a challenge. And now for our second con, we have the fact that this is a single size fits all style of bike. So the Lynx is only offered in a single size and it caters to different riders through its design rather than different frame sizes. The seat offers two different levels on it, one lower and another at a higher level. This is supposed to allow different sized riders to find a comfortable position and it works to a degree. At six feet tall, I found myself on the edge of this bike's capabilities pedal wise. Honestly, I didn't enjoy pedaling the bike at all, finding it very cramped for my legs and almost impossible to find a good position. But luckily the bike is so powerful that it really doesn't need that much pedaling. So it's great that the bike has this throttle and powerful motor to alleviate that necessity of pedaling at all times, but it's definitely not the type of bike you're gonna to wanna to pedal much. On the opposite side of the spectrum, smaller riders are really gonna struggle with the bike's size, weight, and the standover height. Coming in at 100 pounds, the Lynx is large, and that makes it a challenge to maneuver in tight spaces or just when it's unpowered in general. Smaller people are also gonna have trouble swinging their leg over the back of the bike and tipping the bike over with that heavy weight while you're leaning on it is gonna be a challenge as well. For our third con, we have the fact that this has a better top speed than torque. This is a thousand watt motor, which is very powerful, but it's a direct drive motor, which offers a slightly lower torque rating than a planetary geared rear hub motor or a mid drive option, but offers a higher top speed. The heavy weight of the bike also hinders the unit on super steep inclines. Don't get me wrong, this bike is really powerful, and it will easily climb almost any hill, often with only throttle power alone. But on the steepest grades, I'm talking stuff past 16%, we see that the motor performs at a similar level as smaller 750 watt planetary geared rear hub motors and can be outperformed by a similar or smaller wattage mid-drive motor. So if you're planning on climbing a lot of hills specifically, this bike may not be the best choice for you. So what does it do best? Well, if you're the type who would rather let the motor go crazy and stay off the pedals, the Lynx e-bike is definitely the right style for you. This bike is more than just moto inspired. When riding it, it really feels like a silent speed limited motorcycle. The bike rips up the pavement and any dirt road wide enough to offer a sufficient turn radius. So long as you don't stray into tight spaces that the bike isn't really able to maneuver within, the Lynx brings plenty of power and speed. It's also got a super comfortable saddle and simple operation. So the Lynx is really a great option whether you're riding for pleasure or you're commuting or you're looking for some adventure. With lots of capability and capacity, I can see this bike doing well in urban settings, replacing a car or a motorcycle, 
and it's also ready to do double duty as well, ripping it up off-road when it's time to have some fun, to get work hunting or exploring. So what are the reasons to look elsewhere? Well, to enjoy the Quiet Cat Lynx, you really need to be looking for a large motorcycle-inspired e-bike. This bike has a high-powered motor, but also a high overall weight and large size. It's about as far from a bike as you can get in the e-bike world. And many traditional bikers would really cringe at the sight. These factors can make storage and the use of vehicle-mounted racks a big issue. It can also be a problem for shorter or smaller riders. So potential purchasers should definitely ensure that they understand the size of the bike and that they have suitable storage and intend to use the bike for the purposes that it's best built for. Getting started with the frame and geometry. The Lynx is a long way from a traditional bike and it really starts to show in the geometry and seating position. The bike is more like a dirt bike or a motorcycle than a bicycle, with the cranks being really the closest similarity between the two. The seat offers a higher and lower seating position, allowing different riders to sit in a somewhat reasonable position. I found that the bike was really lacking for pedal position, despite being very comfortable to sit on, and I would resort to throttle power most of the time. The robust frame does not flex during use, even when you're jumping or going off larger drop-offs. And the rear coil suspension and front inverted suspension fork play a huge part in this. They really smooth out rough terrain and offer enhanced stability for the bike. So I was really impressed with the way that this bike performed off-road, and I enjoyed the fact that the suspension offers a little bit of adjustability. We have a reach measurement of 15 to 25 inches, depending on where you're sitting on that seat. We have a stack measurement of 25.3 inches, a stand over height of 33 inches, a virtual top tube length of 24.6 inches, and a wheelbase of 51.1 inches. Moving on to the motor, we see a Bafung 1000 watt auto direct drive motor, which powers the links and it's a whopper, able to deliver 1,440 watts and 83 newton meters at peak output. This two-speed direct drive motor automatically changes its gearing to assist with power output and battery consumption. The motor is definitely fun to use, whether you're working with the pedal assist setting or the throttle. The pedal assist is responsive using a cadence and torque sensor. And it's worth noting that users have the option to adjust which sensor the unit is using in the settings. The powerful motor really performs well in all but the very steepest terrain over 16 degrees, and it was able to power us to our best hill climb results yet on our small and medium hill climb, as well as performing very well in the zero to 20 results, offering similar results whether using the pedal assist or throttle. Cockpit and control. The Lynx has a very pleasant cockpit layout with a large LCD display taking center stage. The display is equipped with Bluetooth, cellular, and GPS capabilities. And it's also full color with a very pleasant screen arrangement. When powered on, the display shows its assist setting, current power output, and your current speed. It also features your battery level as a percentage which is really essential for true peace of mind to know what your battery is currently at. You can scroll through some additional info like trip and lifetime odometer, and even a range setting, which will give you an estimate of your remaining capability in miles. The display is controlled by a three button control pad, which is quite easy to use. The standard long press of the up button turns on the lights and the long press of the down button activates the walk mode. This bike also has a very bright halo front headlight, which is super cool. And it also has a low and high beam setting, giving you added visibility and options when you're riding in some different situations. The rear integrated tail light is also a great touch because it adds visibility and offers a visual signal to other road users when you're braking. Next, the battery. The Lynx uses a 48 volt, 20 amp hour or 960 watt hour battery, which can power the unit for over 22 miles at its maximum assist level. The bike was also able to travel 40 miles at 20 miles per hour, 
using a mix of throttle and pedal assist, which is a really impressive result. This large capacity battery is great to see on the heavy bike, and I was impressed that the bike could conserve power while also offering such good performance. We completed two different range tests with the bike, one at 28 miles per hour and another one at 20 miles per hour, resulting in some great numbers that are very competitive with similar bikes. In our first range test at 28 miles per hour, we managed to go 24.82 miles and a total of 1,027 feet in elevation. And for our second range test at 20 miles per hour, we managed to go over 40 miles and 1,637 feet of elevation change. So these are some really impressive numbers. Next, we have the charger, battery removal, and keys. And the charger is a 54.6 volt, three amp output charger that allows you to refill the battery in about six hours. The charger is really a fine companion for the bike with a moderate charge time. It's great to see the three amp output at a higher voltage for increased charging speed. Charging can occur while the battery is installed on the bike via the external charge port. It's located on the lower down tube and it's protected from water by a rubber plug. To unlock the bike, simply insert the key into the lock and turn. After you've unlocked the battery, you can remove it fully by turning the small tab located above it. After this, the battery can be fully removed from the bike. After you've reinserted the battery, you need to lock it back in place with the key to fully secure it. And next we've got the drivetrain. The Lynx has a single speed drivetrain and a hub motor, which is an auto direct drive motor, which has two speeds, allowing the bike to adjust automatically to give the user the best experience. In use, the bike was fine to pedal at all speeds when you're under battery power, but the pedal position is really not optimal. So while pedaling was possible and not painful at the time, the bike is a lot more fun to operate with the throttle, and I could easily see extended pedaling causing some knee pain due to an improper position. The Lynx has a set of hydraulic two-piston brakes, which have 203 millimeter rotors. It's great to see such a large rotor on this bike to assist with the braking surface and cooling. The bike is definitely fast and it needs a powerful brake to compensate for this. During operation, the brakes stopped the bike quickly and they felt quite confident. 24 by 4.5 inch V mission control tires keep the links rolling no matter what you see in front of you. The large wheels and tires are capable of handling pavement or dirt with ease. And the tires are quite knobby, offering an aggressive look and enhanced performance when you're off the pavement. The tires also felt good at high speeds on pavement, offering good performance whether the pavement was wet or dry. And the bike comes equipped with some nice aluminum fenders, which are very important to keep you dry and free of road debris when you're riding at such high speeds. The Lynx has a few different safety features, starting off with its bright integrated front and rear lights. The front light has a high and low beam option, and it's exceptionally large and bright. The rear light is also quite bright with a steady rear light or a rear brake signal to help let other road users what you're up to. The Lynx really brings some high tech features to the table as well including a cellular connection to keep the bike connected via the app and GPS beacon. This means you'll always know where your bike is at all times and be able to lock it off from potential thieves or retrieve it if the worst is to happen. The GPS also helps to keep you safe when you're out on rides. And the connected GPS app also offers some great features like bike updates and odometer counters to remind you about your routine maintenance contact points, starting with the grips. The grips on the bike are a simple rubber lock-on grip, which is branded with the Quiet Cat logo and has a nice gold trim. They look great on the bars and they offer a firm grip with no slippage, so they're really a perfect choice for the unit. When it comes to the saddle, we see that the Lynx has a different saddle than we typically see and it really fits with the Cafe Cruiser style of the bike. The long synthetic leather saddle is padded and comfortable, 
with multiple seating positions available depending on the rider's height and leg length. The saddle is comfortable, but I didn't really enjoy the pedal position, finding it quite cramped for my knees. The bike has simple, flat, well-go platform pedals, which we see on many models. They're a great option and they work just fine. I find they really don't slip too much depending on what shoe type you're using and they're of a sufficient size for larger feet. QuietCat offers some truly legendary accessories for purchase with these bikes, including a few different gear packages that allow you to set the bike up for a specific use. You can set this bike up for commuting, adventure, or overlanding with pannier bags, gear coolers, and different gear or game trailers, and even solar panels and 12 volt chargers to keep you charged up wherever you are. The amount of options is almost endless and allows you to set the bike up for so many different situations. So if you're looking at the links, be sure to check out the available accessories from Quiet Cat because they're pretty cool and worth the look. Fast and fun are two easy ways to describe the Quiet Cat links. It's got a high top speed and comfy suspension, and these all come together to make for a very confident machine, whether you're off the pavement or on road. I can see many riders enjoying the motorcycle inspired style of the Lynx and the way that it's been built by Quiet Cat. So if you're looking for a large, powerful cafe cruiser style e-bike, this is definitely the one for you. Check out the detailed specs at bikeride.com and see user and expert reviews. You can also check out other great e-bikes and see them rated to find your perfect match. If you have a question or something you wanna say, let me know in the comments and we'll start getting you some answers. If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe so we can keep on bringing you the latest e-bike reviews and news. As always, I'm Scott with bikeride.com and I wanna say thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the ride.